viaggio verso la luna inizia in Europa. A la luna vamos desde Europa. De reis naar de maan start in Europa. Ik maak Artemis. Ik maak Artemis. Going to the moon starts in Europe. Die Reise zum Mond beginnt in Europa. Reise zum Mond beginnt in Europa. Somos Artemis. Ja, 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 Welcome Airbus and ESA is very happy to have you here at the Airbus Bremen site here in Germany. Um, originally we planned to have this event in person to gather all the people from ESA and Airbus here in our clean room. However, due to COVID reasons, you probably understand that we have not everybody has been able to travel and due to restriction, we have to keep distances and so on. And that's why we decided to put on a virtual show, but nevertheless, We put on a show, I'm, I, I can promise you that. Um, I'm going to give you a little glimpse behind the scenes into our clean room here. And later on, I will hand over to our ESA Director General, Dr. Jan Werner, who is going to make a great announcement today for the European space industry. And we have all other stakeholders make, um, give some insights into the Artemis program. Believe it or not, the, the whole travel to the moon actually starts here in Bremen, here at our site. Together with ESA, we are building here the ESM, the European Service Module, which will be made together with the Orion spacecraft, which built together the Orion spacecraft. And this service module is providing power, propulsion, electricity, thermal control, and also consumables for the astronauts, oxygen and water. It's the powerhouse of the spacecraft. And this is here built in Bremen, here in the clean room. As I told you before, I wanted to give you a glimpse behind the scenes here in Bremen in the clean room. And what you can see behind and even above me is the ESM2. ESM2, the European Service Module 2 for the Artemis 2 mission. This spacecraft is going to have astronauts on board and will fly around the moon. This ESM2 is almost finished in integration. You can see the propellant tanks, and cables, uh, electronic devices and everything behind me. It's an incredible piece of machinery. And I'm, I'm not getting tired to be totally amazed when I, when I even see or even can touch that. No matter how many years you've worked in space, if, if you look at this ESM, it's incredible and it will go to the moon. As I said, ESM2 is going to have the astronauts fly around the, the moon. It will be finally integrated this year. It will be tested this year and handed over to, to NASA. Uh, the ESM1, which we have built already here, is handed over to NASA already and is currently in the process to get loaded with propellant and is scheduled for launch by end of this year. Now I will show you in a minute ESM-3, and ESM-3 is the one which will have a crew on board, astronauts, and going back to the moon surface first time. It will be the first woman and the next man we bring back to the moon in the Artemis 3 mission. I've told you that I'm going to show you also ESM-3, and that one is behind me. At the end of this short glimpse Uh, into the clean room on our site here, our space site in Bremen. I wanted to show you the ESM-3. That's exactly the one which brings the first women to the moon and the next man back to the moon. That's the, uh, the, the ESM-3 which will build with the Orion spacecraft the Artemis 3 mission. And we are incredibly proud of that. Currently, it's at the early stages of integration. We just received the structure. And we are putting in right now dummies and uh, equipment dummies, brackets, harnesses, 
and then it will be more and more integrated over the time so that we then finally test it here and hand it also over like the ESM1 which we had already and the ESM2 which is planned in a few weeks from now. So incredible piece of machinery, best minds of space exploration in Europe are working that together with ESA, together with our suppliers and our partners and we couldn't be more proud of that. With that I would like to hand over now to our Director General at ESA, Mr. Jan Berner, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really happy and sorry at the same time. I'm happy that we can really today celebrate the contract for three European service modules and I'm sorry because we cannot do it in person. But anyhow, the European service module is for ESA and is for Europe a very important step forward also to human space transportation. When I'm looking back when we had the ATVs I always try to develop out of the ATVs also the possibility to transport humans, but the European member states of ESA were not ready at that time. Now, with the European service module, we are in that. We are supporting, we are also developing an instrument, and a machine, which will bring um, humans not only into uh, Earth's orbit, but also to the Moon. And therefore, it's a very big step forward. The European Service Module is a heritage of ATV, which you can easily recognize if you look to the X-shape um, solar panels. And therefore, I'm very happy that this one is now realized, and we must say it's also because the Americans are, have a trust in us. We are on the critical path for the SLS system. The Service Module is important. Without the Service Module, SLS will not fly. Without the Service Module, Orion will not bring astronauts to the Lunar Gateway or to the Moon. And therefore, with this uh, uh, contract, which will be signed today, a value of something like 650 million uh, euros, and with participation from nine ESA member states, is a very important step into that direction. And we hope by that we will bring astronauts not only to ISS, but also to the Goonwe, uh, Lunar Gateway, and also to the surface of the Moon. So thank you very much that we have the opportunity today. Welcome, Philippe. Thank you. What is your role in this project? I'm the project manager of the European Service Module, which is an element contributing to the Orion spacecraft, which will be in the heart of the Artemis mission. So we wait 52 years since the first time we went to the Moon. What is the difference now? Right. The difference is the objective. The objective is to go to the Moon uh, as a stepping stone to go to Mars in the future. And while doing this to the Moon, also develop an infrastructure on the Moon to have a sustainable exploration. Now, what is new, of course, there are 50 years there has been uh, an enormous evolution in the technology. From the propulsion standpoint, let's say the concepts are still the same. However, the equipment in order to uh, implement those concepts are very much different. There is much more electronics now, much more computer power, which allows to do much more things, have more flexibility for the launch windows, uh, and really have a more agile vehicle to sustain the moon exploration. Uh, well, I see there is a lot of uh, new challenge going on. Yeah. There's a lot of new challenge going on. We need to go there. Uh, we need to have humans. We, and for that, we are planning to have the gateway. The gateway is uh, an infrastructure which will be in the moon vicinity, uh, where also ESA provides two uh, critical elements, uh, a refueling module called Esprit and an habitation module. ESA will be fully committed to develop those elements. Any fun facts that you want to share with us in this project? Um, maybe not so much fun fact, but some interesting information. The first flight of Artemis, the first Artemis mission is an unmanned mission. So there will be some uh, ballast put in the capsule. One will be a dummy, and I guess for other astronauts it will be uh, all sorts of goodies like uh, flags, pins, etc. 
And if everything goes okay, uh, all those goodies will be recovered when the capsule lands. A second piece of information which is quite interesting is the selection by NASA of the name of Artemis. Uh, for those who know the Greek mythology, Artemis is the twin sister of Apollo. So there is a link and a, and a little wink to the Apollo mission that took place in the 60s, but also it is uh, NASA's plan to land the first woman on the moon with the Artemis III mission. But there is one thing from the mythology we don't want to reproduce, because if you're familiar with the mythology, Orion, which is the name of the vehicle that's going to go to the moon, Orion was a giant, a hunter, a giant hunter, but he was killed by Artemis, and that we absolutely do not want to reproduce. Okay. <laughs> That's unexpected. Okay, yes. that was unexpected. And well, we're looking forward to see how it's going with the module. Yes, I'm very excited uh, of the upcoming mission and I cross my fingers that everything will go right. Okay, I will. we will. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, Philip. Thank you. <laughs>
even in the life of an astronaut, when you can see and almost touch the very ship that will carry humans beyond our horizons, beyond the next frontier, a vehicle that is built to voyage to another world. I also see we have received a lot of questions online, like the ones from Elfie, Trudy, Sarah, from Cryptonomaly or Stars on Toast on why we are going to the moon and whether I will fly there. I will try to answer a few of these right now, but let's take a step back first. It must have always been driving shivers down the spine of an explorer or of any curious human to feel the aura that surrounds such a vehicle. And I can even feel it from here, the European Astronaut Center in Cologne. The last time when I've been in this room in Bremen, it was almost 10 years ago. And what I looked at in awe at that time was the automated transfer vehicle ATV-5. Europe's autonomous cargo vehicle, the giant shoulder on which Artemis now stands. It was said to be sent out to Kourou a while later to launch to space a few years later, so I knew I would never see it again. <laughs> I also remember on the other side wondering whether I would ever make it to space. The thought appeared incredibly unreal and remote at the time. I had just been starting basic astronaut training at ESA and at that time uh, it was the first piece of real space hardware that I've ever seen with my own eyes. It was almost incomprehensible to me that I looked at something that would be sent to space a few years later and it did send shivers down my spine just like now. The feeling that I just mentioned is at the heart of why we humans do exploration why we discovered every continent on this planet, why we started to live and do science in the hostile environment of Antarctica, and why we started to fly to space in the last decades. Every step of exploration opened up the next one beyond, and as a result of this, Europe now has a fascinating program that explores the space around our planet, including the next big destinations that are waiting for us out there. From our human and robotic space missions to low Earth orbit on the space shuttle and later on through the International Space Station ISS, we learned how humans can live and work in space, how to deal with the unforeseen, and how to build the technology that carries us further out into space. We returned invaluable data for science. We developed new technologies to improve life on Earth. We worked together across nations and continents. And maybe most importantly of all, we returned the inspiring perspective of a human looking back at their fragile planet. The future of Earth orbit will even be more diverse with a multitude of nations and companies operating out there, cultivating the field that the space agencies have plowed in the last decades. At the other end of the spectrum, we have sent robotic spacecraft far out into the solar system and to the distant but intriguing planet Mars, where they are operating right now at this very moment. They are preparing humankind's first ever attempt to return samples from Mars to Earth and to get a real shot at answering the question whether earthly life has siblings in space. I do not have any doubt that you and I have a real chance of one day seeing humans and amongst them Europeans walk on Mars. At the same time, we're preparing to go forward to the moon, to surpass the achievements of the fantastic Apollo program, to go there to live and work as scientists in a sustainable way. We're currently designing the Artemis Gateway with our international partners. And in fact, I'm one of the joint team of experienced engineers and astronauts who are working on how to build this space base around the moon. It will only be the first step though, like a base camp on the way to the summit. Just that the next summit is in this case, the surface of the moon. What we will bring home from this summit will be the knowledge of tomorrow and the perspective of a human living for weeks and months in a place where our home planet looks like a distant little blue marble in a black cosmos. The moon will tell us about our own past on how the Earth was formed, which of course is important for us to understand, not only to geophysicists like me. It will also allow us to look further out into the universe 
and to better protect Earth from the dangers that come from out there. And it will teach us to operate more sustainable on our own planet Earth. For example, by using resources more sparingly, producing less CO2 and waste. But I would even take a bet right now that the best thing we will find out there, we can't even imagine yet at this moment. One thing is clear though, just as we started to travel to Antarctica a century ago, we now have a lot to learn from the moon, our eighth continent. And the very vehicle that will get us there stands right in front of you, sending shivers down our spines, ensuring that Europe, through its scientists, engineers and astronauts, will take part in the next big adventure of humankind. It will be a complex mission, that is clear, and it will take a lot of experience. Whoever will fly on this fantastic machine, be it my colleagues from the European Astronaut Corps or even myself, we're ready for it. And we'll make sure to take you with us on this journey. Oh, and do you know what happened to ATV-5, the one that I had seen in these very halls in Bremen and which made me wonder if I had what it takes to ever fly into space? Well, it turned out a few years later we would meet again, to my surprise. In fact, I opened its hatch and welcomed it to be part of ISS in an orbit around our planet. It taught me to never underestimate a dream. Hello, my name is Nico Detman. I'm heading the Human Exploration Group in ESA's Directorate for Human and Robotic Exploration. I would like to tell you a bit today how we are building the service module together with our industry. The European service module is hence the entry ticket to the European Human Lunar Exploration. ESA and Airbus have signed the first European service module development contract already in 2012. The contract for the ESM number two and three is currently in place and an agreement for a batch of further three service modules has been uh, signed end of last year. The main European industry involved um, is uh, Airbus because they have already been the prime on the ATV spacecraft and the service module is a kind of derivative. The European suppliers are to a large extent the same already involved in the ATV program. Overall, suppliers from more than 10 European countries are delivering components for the service module. So the sequence from integration and test in Europe and the US is uh, quite dense and interesting. So the delivery uh, to the KSC takes about three years. Once delivered to KSC, ADS is supporting the mating, which is a kind of marriage between the crew module adapter and the service module. The so-called stack is then undergoing combined environmental acceptance testing before the mating with the actual crew module and before the final mounting of the service module solar arrays. Eventually, the complete Orion vehicle is handed over to the NASA ground processing facility for the final launch preparation, including tanking and the mounting of the vehicle onto the Artemis SLS launcher. The transfer of ownership of the first European service module has just taken place in December last year. Thank you. Thank you very much for having you today and uh, thank you for your interest in looking behind the scenes at our Airbus site in Bremen. I hope you have enjoyed uh, watching and seeing these European spacecraft which are playing such an important role in this incredible Artemis mission. Thank you very much again. Thanks. <laughs>